Hey y'all, welcome to the Messy Studio. Come on in and see what's going on. Welcome back. Today, I'm gonna make this from this. Three pieces of old pine fence board. Yep, that boat right there. This is a commissioned project, so let's get at it. First order of business, got a sticker from my buddy Rod Humphrey. Rod Humphrey Woodworking on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel up here and there'll be a link in the description. Check him out if you haven't already, he's a great guy. Rod, I think I'm gonna put you over here by Doug. Cool. Thanks, Rod. Appreciate it. All right, I'm going to start by cutting out my, my pattern. I'm going to cut it a little oversized. I'll hang on to that. Right now. Now, I'm going to, I've got these in the orientation that I'm going to use them. So, I'm going to stack these with double-sided tape. And then I'm going to affix this to the top. And I'll take it to the bandsaw and cut my rough shape. Now to attach this, I'm just going to use a glue stick. Now I'll take this to the bandsaw and cut to the edge of the paper. And that's that. Yeah, that's a little rough right now, but you know, we're getting it's that's the way it's gotta be. Plenty of room down here for the main part. And I saved that so I can reuse it. Now, what I want to do, take this and look at this bottom shape. Let me mark my center line. I know where the center line is up here. Okay, got my center line identified. So now I can take one of these. And the rest of it's kind of going to be baguettes and bagali. I want to start on the carving before I take it apart and glue it back together because of how the layout's going to be. The seats are actually going to be, these are the seats right here. And looking at the layers, this is the top. Actually, this way. Looking at the layers, the seats will be carved into the middle board of the middle board and the middle board. So the middle board is going to have the seats carved in them. So I'll have to cut those out on my scroll saw after I take them apart. And I'll use this as the template for that. I'm not sure what happened here, but after I cut the shape out on the bandsaw, I went back to the workbench and I used my quarter inch angle grinder with a flap sander on it. And I basically just carved the shape out using that. 
to my dismay, when I downloaded all my files from the camera to the computer and began editing, I realized that it didn't record. So when I finished doing that, I turned the camera off, which was actually turning it on to record, and I recorded six hours of this. So, sorry folks, I don't know what happened. I, my, my fingers lied to me, I guess. Okay, let's scroll this out. Boy, I really am good at this scroll sawing stuff. Yes, that was sarcasm. Okay, now, okay, now I'm going to take my router. I've got a oh, eight or a three sixteenths spiral upcut bit, and I'm going to route the bottoms of the seats. Alright, so now when we put this on the bottom, you can see under the seat. When I come back, I will do some hand sanding on the inside of this and remove all the fuzzies. And then I can start gluing the bottom on and then I'll finish sanding the outside. Okay, I've got the bottom glued on to the middle piece. After I route it out underneath the chairs, I've got it glued on. <clears throat> I smoothed out the cracks with wood filler. I'm going to paint this anyway, so I smoothed out the joint with and made a fillet out of wood filler. And I'll sand it one more time on the inside before I glue the top on, and then I'll finish shaping the top. I uh, had some issues that I had to fill on the outside as well but it still looks like a boat and I'll come back in the morning after this is all dried and sand it up and glue the bottom on and once that's set I'll shape the bottom and we'll start painting it. Just doing a quick smoothing sand on the inside of this get all the surfaces nice and flush and smooth so you won't see any seams when I hit it with the primer. Looks like a boat. Yeah, I like it. Now, I need to keep this surface here free from paint so I'll get a good glue joint when I glue this on. The bottom is going to be burnt orange because that's one of his favorite colors. The inside of the boat is going to be white. I'm going to paint the seats brown. My birds are singing to me. Can you hear them? It's all real pretty. You don't see them here very often. Saw a real pretty swallowtail butterfly yesterday. So what is my fascination with songbirds and butterflies? I'm actually a biologist by education. Hence my fascination with bird songbirds and butterflies. The department head where I got my bachelor's degree, biology department head that is, Dr. Terry Maxwell, he was 
he was an ornithologist, bird guy, and he was a very, very talented artist in his own right. He would, and it didn't matter what class he was teaching, whether it was ornithology or one of the general biology courses, <clears throat> he would, he had colored chalks and he would draw the most elaborate colored birds on the chalkboard. He'd spend hours in the evening after class or after classes drawing birds for the classes the next day to come in and admire. Amazing artist. If I'd had a cell phone back in those days, I would have got pictures. I wasn't your typical college student. I was nearly 30 when I started. I had four kids when I started college. I had the fifth one not long after I enrolled. I was in biology because I had to figure out what was causing that. Put a stop to that. Now I'm going to paint the inside white and then I'll turn it over because the paint will all be on the inside here. Then I'll turn it over and I'll paint the outside burnt orange and I'll let this set up. I'm going to leave the keel natural, I think, and stain it and we'll see what that looks like. But I want the keel to stand out and look as natural as possible. I'm probably going to have to put several coats on because I'm using the initial coat as a primer coat. Time for the burn orange. All right, we'll let those first coats dry and come back. Do it again. Set this up on here so I can get some circulation inside so it'll dry. And we'll be back. I went ahead and put some stain on that keel. That I do like. I think that's going to look okay. So now it's time to put my second coat of white on. All right, let that dry a few hours. Then I'll come back and paint the seats. Then I'll take the tape off and glue the top on. While I'm letting this dry, I think I'm gonna wheel my drum sander out and start working on the base. I'm gonna use this piece of rock maple for the base and I'll build a, I'll cut, I'll mill a couple of, anyway, I'll mill a couple of pieces that are shaped like this, like the bottom of the boat, put on here so it'll rest. Okay, I've got this thickness through my sander. <clears throat> it burned on me a little bit because even though I was running at only a 10, the the, or the speed on my conveyor, it got, uh, this this rock maple is just so hard. I mean, it's hard. And and it, it burned a little bit, but I can sand that away with my oscillating, I mean, my uh, random morbid sander. I got a couple of holes, so I'm gonna fill these with 30 minute epoxy. I'm still gonna have to wait overnight for it to cure, but that's okay. That's not a bad color. Not a great color, but it's not a bad color. It's kind of bronzish. Gives enough contrast against the wood. It's not a stark contrast, but it's, it's not a shocking contrast either. I think I'm gonna paint the seat starting brown. Time to go eat lunch. Let that dry. Come back, I'll put a second coat on. Maybe a third, I don't know. This isn't taking that brown very well. And then I'll be ready to glue the two halves together after that dries. Okay, now I've got these two things to make those brackets with. This is strictly a guess.
not perfect, but it's going to work. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Besides make a mess. Like I said, I'm going to have some final shape sanding to do, but I think it's going to be just fine. Which means I'm going to have some repainting to do too, but I knew that. I, I don't like the stain on the top, mainly because the grain just goes in too many directions. So I'll paint it burnt sienna. I'm actually quite happy with that. Okay, I'll let this sit in the clamps for an hour before I unclamp it and clean the glue off. Okay, the glue's dry. Get it out of the clamps. Fine tuning on the shaping. And then I can go about finish finishing. Get my air cleaner going. Put my RZ mask on. Now I need to take it to that sander and sand that at an angle here. I need to cut, cut it back to about there. So make me a mark. This got nice and cured, so now I can, it's ready for me to take and run through the drum sander to get it all smooth and I can finish working on the base. But for now, the problem with this boat is this has a flat top. They are not flat like this. As you can see in this picture that I'm going from, it's a little bit curved. So I'm going to put a slight curve, or attempt to, So most of the fine tuning is done. I've got a lot of touch up painting to do. <laughs> Put my paint brushes away. Before I start painting this. that dry for a little bit. I've got a little bit of touch up to do on the inside. I'm going to take this old really thin mouse pad and I'm going to cut a strip because I'm going to use that neoprene to line the things the boats go on. Well I need to make a mark first. So I'm going to set this up here at the edge. maple is pretty stuff but my gosh it's hard people think mesquite is hard this stuff's hard now I need to sand this with my orbital sander uh, but I don't want to do it until all the paint's dry over there so I will come back in the morning and sand this up around the corners and I think I'm just going to epoxy these on once I get them placed where I want them I'm just going to use some five minute epoxy and epoxy them on and then I can shoot the stand. That's why I've got the tape over the neoprene to protect it. Now I gotta go to the grocery store and figure out what I'm gonna cook mama for dinner. All right, I'm gonna put a round over bit in my router, round the corners of the base over. Well, before we plug it in, let's set the depth. How about that? Yeah, that's not surprising. I expected the edges to burn a little bit, especially on the end grain, because this stuff is so blasted hard. I've already got my Maker's Mark burned in the bottom. And it sits nice and flat. This is ready for me to epoxy these into place.
what I'm doing, I'm making an alignment mark. On the paper. Now I'll mix up some epoxy, use my small square to set my line and glue it in place. Set this on here to make sure it's right. That'll do. Let that set for a few hours. And then I can put the finish on it. Now I'm going to shoot the inside first. After it dries, I'll turn it over and shoot the bottom. I'm going to use polycrylic gloss. Okay, after this dries, I'll come back and hit it with some steel wool and shoot it again. I may put two or three coats, maybe four, I don't know, we'll see. All right, when that dries, I'll turn it over and I'll spray the bottom of this and this. Let that set a half hour and put another coat on. I don't think I'm gonna need but two coats. see what it looks like. Well here it is. All done. Got a couple, several coats of Benwax polycrylic on it. This curly hard, this, this hard rock maple is nice and curly. Turned out pretty nice. Stand I made for it, it's, it looks alright. Nice little boat. So I'm happy with it. I got two projects in the works now. They'll, I'll be working on them at the same time. One's gonna be really really fast. One Take this here piece of spalted maple, it's about 8 inches across and it looks to be about 9 inches long. It'll be, I may be able to get a 7.5 inch bolt out of it when it's all said and done. It just depends on how bad the checking is, but it should be pretty. It won't take long to do. The other half of that log I'll be doing pretty quick too and it, it'll be natural edge. Uh, but the, the other project I'll be working on while I'm working on that bowl is, <laughs> is this birdhouse. One of our sons made this when he was in junior high and it's seen better days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to I'm going to clean it clean I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to clean it up and put it back together with glue and screws and repaint it and hang it because I think looking at it it's the right dimensions for a, a wren or a, a finch or even a chickadee. So I'm gonna put it back together and hang it out in the backyard and maybe, hopefully, I'll get me a songbird nesting in it. I'm gonna make several more of these over the summer in preparation for next year as well. I may not film them all, but I mean, we'll see. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, folks. I really, really do. Please like, subscribe, share, ring the bell, you know, all that stuff. And uh, come back and see us. You never know what we're going to be up to here in the Messy Studio. Y'all come back.